Hi, everybody. It's Dee Reinhardt, and we're starting our session on career readiness. Up in the upper left-hand corner, we have a handout for you. It is more for reference than anything else. If you want to take a look, we can follow along with that. Otherwise, the handout itself is in the pod just below. All you have to do is click on the document and then download the file. It will open up a new window. If you have problems hearing on your computer speakers, you are welcome to dial in to the conference number and you will be able to hear it on your telephone. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat pod that is next to our share pod, and we will be happy to try and get you an answer as soon as possible. Uh, we welcome you back if you were here for the 1 o'clock session. And my poll question for you today is, have you checked out Optimal Resume? It is one of the newest tools for Illinois WorkNet, and it is a phenomenal piece of software that is available to anyone who uses Illinois WorkNet at all. We're going to get started with our presentation. I'm going to begin by sharing my screen, so give me just a moment while I get that going. So if you can see my screen, you should be seeing the uh, Summer Youth Employment website. If you can do that, please raise your hand with the little man at the top of the screen. There, I get to say it again. Yay! And we're going to uh, move forward now. What we're going to do is we're talking about career readiness. And one of the things that this is is just after the youth have completed their application, they get to start working on their career readiness. For you, as a workforce professional, um, you will go to the bottom of the website, whether you access it on your phone, your tablet, or your computer, you will go to the bottom of the website screen and click on SYEP guide. From there, you get to see the, the all of the tools that are available to you, and we covered all of these in the previous webinar. That recording will hopefully be posted within the next day or two, so that if you did not have a chance to attend, you will be able to watch the recording. And we will be repeating the session on a July 1st for those of you who were unable to attend today. Uh, in our tools, we have Get Started, Career Readiness, Work Experience, and Reporting. We are going to be focusing on career readiness in this session. This is the guide, and in the guide, we get to see the tools that are available or will be available to you as soon as they are up and live on the website. We are still doing some testing on some things. We are doing some validation on some information that we received at the meeting in Chicago on the 17th. So as soon as all of those things are confirmed and available, we will get things up and moving. As part of the career readiness, we want to prepare the youth to uh, get ready for their job. And some of those activities that are available are to help you help them. We will have a guide that is Achieve Your Goals, an instructor guide. We have a career plan guide that is available as a PDF. We'll click there and let you see what it looks like. All you have to do is scroll through it. It gives you some estimated times that this should take, where you can find additional information. So all of these tools are available to you to help you guide your students through that process. We also have um, Help Youth Recover Their Username and Password. 
and then the job search instructor guide, which is very much like the career plan instructor guide. We also want to have the youth complete the pre-assessment, um, complete the pre-assessment, at least one paycheck, and the post-assessment is what's required for your youth. And they must complete the pre-assessment and the post-assessment to be able to obtain their certificate. So as part of the process here of helping the youth get a job is helping them get a resume put together and get that certificate of completion so that they can show potential employers that they have been gaining some skills, whether or not they actually have physical work experience. And then the additional part of this program is to help them gain the work experience. Under Complete Employment 101 Guide, we have About the Guide. We've got some instructor guide that is coming. We have the Career Plan Instructor Guide, again, available, helping youth recover youth and uh, password. And then last but not least, completing the post-assessment and downloading the Certificate of Completion. This is, again, tools about how to help the youth accomplish that. One of the things that I w do want to show you from our tools, uh, on our guide, we do sign in to our SYEP tools at the top of the screen from your guide. And once you're in the tools, you will see in your tools uh, the information that's available on your dashboard about the youth, the employers, placements, organization. We'll also have a tab here for reports and payroll upload. Uh, those are not quite ready yet, and we will get them up to you as soon as possible. But one thing that you will want to take a look at in here is under the assessments and worksite placement status, this lets you know of your youth who are in the program already, who have been accepted into the program. It will show you how many of the youth are on the pre-assessment, how many are not, not complete, or how many are complete. And as you can see here, with the not complete, we have one youth out of one youth. So that's 100% not complete. Also, with the post-assessment, you'll see the same information for whether they are complete or not. And then it has the information for the worksite placement. So you'll want to pay attention to this, uh, this section right here for the career readiness uh, so that you can know where the youth are in that process. And then that way, once they're working through their post-assessment process that uh, work placement also goes along with it. Let me switch to the youth views. One of the things that you can do with youth is, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back one moment. Um, on the website, if a youth applies, they will be taken to uh, a page where they can complete an application. And as of right now, the uh, verification process is in place for the information that you provided to us on the 17th. We uh, will have that available, and the application will be up as soon as all of that information is verified. What we will do then is when the youth goes to the application, they will start out with four questions. Have you ever been in a previous summer employment program? Do you remember your Illinois WorkNet account login? Have you ever had an Illinois WorkNet account? And then if they cannot remember their password, it will help them recover their password. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to act as if I have never been in a youth program at all. What that then does is it takes me to it will take me to a place where I can register. I need a first name, a last name, date of birth, email address. I need to confirm an email address. I need to set up a username and password, confirm that password, and then pick a secret question. Sorry, I need to scroll and then select. 
pick a secret question that I want to remember and then select a secret answer. Once I have done all of this, I click Accept Agreement, save it, and it will take me to this page where I can complete the rest of the application information that includes all of the demographic information that is on the sheet at, uh, from which you can hand the student so that they are prepared to complete their application. Once they're in their account, this is the information that they will see. Now this is a test data application so that you will see some fake information. And I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember the program MASH, but Alan Alda was one of the actors in that program, so we like to use his name. This will show the applicant all of the information that they entered on their application, and it gives them the ability to print the document as well. So they, they can print it and hand it to you, or if they're right there in your uh, computer lab, for example, you can help them by printing it right then. Under the Career Readiness tab, it starts into the process where they can take their pre-assessment test and access their employment guide, their career plan, the job search plan, the Achieve Goals notes, which is all part of this Employment 101 guide, which we're going to get into in just a moment. It also then gives them access to take the post-assessment, and it will change to post-assessment in this block as soon as I have taken the pre-assessment test. And then at the very bottom, if the student has obtained a 70% or higher post-assessment, they will be able to earn their certificate of completion and print it out for their future reference or to add it to their optimal resume. Under the pre-assessment, it's real simple. You just click here. It takes them to a new window that will give them all of the questions, and they can answer the 25 questions. And I'm just going to pick C for every answer right now, just so that I can get through this. Uh, they can read all of these questions, and uh, if you need to help them read it, please do so, but do not give them the answer. Um, part of the process of getting them through this is to make sure that they uh, can figure out what their answers are to begin with, and then you can gauge where they need to go down the road for the post-assessment. And as you can see, I got a 20% by answering all Cs. So don't let somebody do that in your program. <laughs> we also want to show you about the employment guide. Now, I already have this open, and I started a little bit of it. So I'm going to open up my tab here that shows you the Employment 101 guide. This is a really great tool, and as you're going along through the process, you are able to do each section, save it, and then you can view the details. So right here, I've already done a couple of things. I've saved some of the items. And as I view the details, got to love computers when they work rapidly, then you can see where I've started. and. This career plan is available for that student after they're all the way done. They, they can print this out. They can edit it can do anything they want to. But let's go back to the guide right now and take a look at a few of these things that the, you can help the student with in your career readiness class time. Under the prepare a career plan, you have the ability to explore careers, explore 
training and get qualified. Let's take a look at the Explore Careers. Now, I've already completed each of these sections, but that doesn't mean that I cannot go back to these sections and modify or revisit something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this Discover Careers that match your interests. In here, you have the ability to click on this Career Interest Survey, which takes you to this window that you can, I'm going to scroll down a little bit so that you can see a little bit more of this. You can take a look at an interest profiler, or you can take a look at a skills profiler. And as you can see, this is 10 to 20 minutes of a, a quiz kind of environment that they can take where it's a yes or no, yes or no, A or B, that will take them through it. It's the same thing with the skills profiler. And you also have a work importance locator as well as a career cluster inventory. We suggest that each of the students do all four of these items in a year's time, even if they did this in the past, in a year's time, some of their interests or skills may have changed. Time sometimes to just take a look at what's going on in their plan. The next feature that's on here is explore jobs and required skills and credentials. What you should know about Selecting your career path brings up a screen with uh, information about what you should investigate when you're looking at a potential career path. The next tab gives you career and wage information about different opportunities. And if you notice right here, you want to look for the jobs that have the upward mobile arrow, because those are demand occupations. So what I'd like to do right now is take a look at health science. And when you click on the health sciences, it will give you a screen with a number of different jobs that are available. And if you, while we're waiting for this to fill in with all the fields, if you notice over here at the right-hand side of the screen, you can add a new career. I had already done this and started with a landscape designer. So if I want to add a new career, all I have to do is type in. So maybe I decide that I would like to add a new job, a new path, potential path, based upon some of the information that shows up in this screen. And it's still working because there's a lot of information in here for everybody to view. Um, you can also select, once the job is there, uh, it will let you pick whether the job is high demand, medium, or low. And if it's got the upward mobile arrow, it will be high demand. Um, you can enter in things that you like about the job or th things that you d dislike about the job. Once you enter all of this information, you click Save Changes, and all of that information will be saved so that when the student clicks on their plan, it will go back and show them what they've already selected. They can save as many potential careers as they would like. And this is a great feature um, for youth to do some comparison on these different jobs. I'm going to let you uh, investigate this down the road because it's still loading, and I don't want to take that much time to wait for this on our webinar. You can also identify your soft skills that are required for all the jobs. And in 
when you click on the first link, it brings up an article about using the soft skills that are required for the job. And then we have a job skills guide that gives you different kinds of skills that you might need for a different sort of job. It, we have an article about uh, academic skills that you might need. We have articles about computer literacy that you may need, and then different articles about the different uh, soft skills that are almost all employers appreciate when you come in for a new job. So let's take a quick look at the industry tech technical skills. So what are they? Where will you find them? What kind of skills would you need based on the, the different industries that we have in our list? And last in this in, uh, particular section is identify your technical skills that are associated with this particular item. And if you notice, you have information that stays to the right-hand side so that students can continue adding new information along the way. So if they want to add a new career, they can add the information about that here. We have information for the optimal skills assessment tools. And optimal has their own set of skills and tools that, that can be accessed. So if you take a look here, it takes you to the optimal tool right here on the right-hand side of the page. And the beauty of this tool is it's a single sign-on, meaning that if a user to Illinois WorkNet has their username and password, that's all they need to have. So once they're logged in, they will op open into Optimal Resume just by being logged in. And here we have sample youth resumes as well. We talked about this at the meeting in Chicago that I had created some very simple, uh, no previous work experience resumes so that the youth can take a look at at some examples to help them along the way. We have an article about technical skills and how they might need to use different technical skills depending upon the kind of industry they're in. Healthcare might require one set of skills where information technology would require a different one. We also have an article on look at the big picture when selecting your career path and use all of the information that the students will gain to help them identify the pros and cons for the different careers that they might be considering. As soon as they're done with an entire section, then they will show up on the guide across the top here. The colored bar will fill in further and further and further as they complete their section. When we explore training, we get to look at different training programs that will identify with the career that they selected. So we'll go back to my landscape designer opportunity here. And you can pick a training plan. And I actually nicknamed my training plan Plant School because I want to find out a little bit more about what it would take me. And if they have a different career path in here, then it will add that information based on what they pick. So you can find information about career and training information by exploring the different careers. We have them uh, broken out by the uh, 15, 16, I'm sorry, 16 major uh, financial, I'm, I'm sorry, career centers that are available. And then you can also find training programs uh, to help you decide which training program might be better for you. So if I type in a keyword, 
it will give, and if I enter in a zip code, and if I put in a distance parameter, it will give me all of the schools and what their in-state tuition costs would be for a particular program. So if I want to go to College of Lake County and do landscape design, uh, it would cost me $2,790 to take that program. If I go to Triton College for landscape design, it would cost me $2,790, where McHenry County is a different program and costs just a bit less. So that way they can take that school information and enter it in the side over here for what school they want to potentially attend. So it gives them the opportunity to compare school programs as well. We also want to compare the pros and cons of the training programs. And you can take a look at each of these components. And one important thing for a lot of people is how, how are they going to support themselves while they're in training? Maybe they're a single parent. Maybe they are not being supported by anybody. So here you need to look at some of these items. Uh, are they qualified for financial aid? What kind of other agencies are available for them? And last but not least, in this section, you want to identify all of those pros and cons. So taking a look at some of the videos that we have available in our Eleanor WorkNet repertoire will give you some of that information that the youth might need. Let's go back to the guide and take a look at the other two components of our programming. Go back to the guide. There we go. Um, as they're getting qualified, you can analyze your options. So what is, what is it that they need to do to take a look at their program? So if I go back to my landscape designer program, we'll want to say, uh, what is the return on investment? That's what the ROI stands for. If they're going to spend $3,000, but they can make $5,000 in the first six months, that's a pretty good return on investment. If they're going to spend $90,000 on an education, how long will it take them to make that return on the investment? So we have a program here that will help them weigh the options of your training. What is it? Will it cost more, but I can get out six months earlier and be closer to home? What are the differences? Why should they pick one option over another? When they make a plan, are they making SMART goals? So SMART stands for, and if you look on the right-hand side, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And as you're working through this with the students, you can help them by picking a goal. So I started out with send the application to the school. That's my first goal. If I need to find the application online, I give it a date. I complete filling in the application. I give that a date. I ask a mentor to review the application. I give that a date. I email the application to the school. I give that a date. Now, are you achieving? Are those realistic goals? Are, you, are they attainable? Are they something that could be a problem? And it gives you the ability to pick choices and, and, and help them make those decisions. So one of the possible roadblocks would be, my mentor is out of town. Who's a backup person that they could have review that application. So this helps them learn the process and develop a backup plan in all aspects of their goals. How can they overcome obstacles? We have, we have an item here.
to help them overcome an obstacle. So it's great information that they can read and do at their own pace. How do they apply for financial aid programs? What kind of financial aid is right? What are five tips that they can use? What are they going to do when they complete training and earn credentials? And those credentials can go in to their Rolodex, I'm sorry, into their portfolio on their optimal resume tool. So this is just some great information that's available for the, audi uh, for the youth audience to help them make sure that they're truly prepared for a workplace experience. Let's take just a moment to take a look and see if there are any questions that we need to answer for the participants in the webinar. It looks like Natasha might be answering everything. So that's, uh, that's great. We'll move on with the prepare a job search plan. So as you were looking at the prepare a job search plan, we look at the get prepared item. Now what's nice about this is a, a, a youth can bounce around. Maybe they, they found something, but now they want to work on their resume, or now they want to work on their getting organized. They can move from place to place on this employment guide, which is really wonderful because I know I have a little bit of attention deficit at my age, and I get bored. So maybe I want to go work on something else. So this gives them that opportunity. So as we get organized, we have nine steps for a job search. So what are those nine steps that you want to look at? And, and we have articles here that will help them. What is it that you've collected or documented that will help you with your job search? OK, I have a copy of my work history. I have some transferable skills that I can use. Maybe we have somebody coming out of the military. What are those military school uh, skills that they might have? Do you have a letter of recommendation from a former employee? Maybe, you, maybe the youth babysat for a neighbor down the street and that that person would write them a letter of recommendation. Once we have those things, we can save those changes, and they're kept in, in their Employment 101 plan. Uh, preparing your resume. We have the webinar that we've done on Optimal Resume, and we have some other archive videos of things that we've done with different resumes, what's good and bad about different resumes. So they can take a look at all of this information. What's an action verb? Why are they important? So that's a great uh, opportunity for these youth to take a look at these tools and help them build the best resume. What's important about a portfolio? And how can they add something to a portfolio? Does a youth need a portfolio? Yes and no. Maybe they have some certificates. Maybe they've won some awards. Maybe they have done something in school that would be useful in a portfolio. And those are all things that can be added. And if you take a look at the optimal resume, it's a portfolio builder, too prompting me to log into my Illinois WorkNet account so that I can access Optimal Resume. When we prepare a plan, it goes back to the SMART goals. How do you stay motivated? How do you overcome obstacles? Maybe when it comes to your job search plan, you have different goals than if you're using training as an option only. So this gives you the ability to enter multiple goals and multiple processes to, to achieve those goals. Let's go back to our guide. When we look at finding jobs, why is it important to network? We have some webinars from last year that we've done that will help them. 
how do you search for job openings. There's all kinds of tools that are available going to company trade associations or particular organizations in the area, using things like LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, using the Illinois WorkNet job search tool that's available. How do they actually apply for a job? Things to know when they're actually filling out that job application. And what's the reason why they might not get an interview? Maybe it's because their resume just isn't right. Maybe they need to use the proper contact information. We have articles available for all of this information. What do you want to do with when you go in for an interview? What's the proper clothes to wear for an interview? What do you do after an interview? All sorts of tools, things to practice. Optimal Resume has a great practice tool where they can actually record their practice questions and answers. So this is great information for your youth to help them along the way. And our last section is achieving the goals. So once they start a job, what are they going to do to be prepared to accept the job? Is After they go to the interview, is it really a place that they want to work? Uh, do they, did the employer ask for any documents that they're going to need to have? And do they already have some sort of obligation that might keep them from starting the job on the day that they were supposed to? All good tips for people to pay attention to and know for future jobs down the road. What do they need for their first day? Are they requesting a copy of a driver's license? Do they need a copy of their social security card? What are the forms that they're going to need to fill out? What's the culture in the new job? Is, is it something different here than it is at their old job? What are all those ideas? Uh, understanding expectations. Know the different tools and the different items. What's proper, what's proper behavior and dress code? What are their rights? This is all information that they can read on their own and complete their job, uh, their, ex I'm sorry, their program, their Employment Guide 101, so that they'll be ready and to be successful on their job. Now, once they start a job, there might be some financial things that they need to do. Set up a savings account. We're actually going to have a webinar on financial advice, uh, on the financial aspects of starting your first job. So we'll, we'll have somebody address these items in a future webinar. What's your, what's your current financial status and what kind of goals do you need? Are you going to save for an emergency fund? Do you need to pay off debt? What are the goals that the youth might have? Maybe they want to save, save for a car. So they would put that in there and save it, and it would be added to their plan. How are they going to monitor their budget? What is a budget? Help them figure that out by going through these sections. So that's our career, our Employment 101 guide, and it's a great tool if the youth use it. Once they're done, once they've filled in all this information, they can go back to their guide. They can see their career plan. They can see any of the information that they've entered in for the job search plan, an elevator speech. What's their 30-second elevator speech? Any information that they've entered in here otherwise? as well as achieving their goals. So their financial goal might be to save for a car. Do they have any notes from the violence prevention? Do they have any notes about building soft skills? Do they have any notes about gaining a volunteer position? And then, last but not least, what is in their SMART plan? Are there any other opportunities? And how many goals do they actually have? So that's our career readiness platform. Do we have any questions from the audience that we need to answer? 
do we have anything else that I need to go back over? Sandra raised her hand. Do, if you have a question, Sandra, please put it in the chat pod so that we can answer them for you. And just so that you are aware, tomorrow at 1 p.m., I'm going to slide through here so that I can get to the end real quick. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we have uh, two more webinars. We have one at 1 p.m. that is on work readiness. And we have one at 2.30 p.m. that is on program reports and payroll. Just to let you know, we will continue with our technical assistance webinars. The first one is next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. We're going to try and limit them to a half an hour unless we get into some deep discussions. And then we will be able to help you along the way. And then again, June 25th, we will have our violence prevention webinar that is geared for youth as well as partners. And we will have that available as a recording as well. Uh, we have a question here. I noticed that when I tried on my smartphone, you need Adobe. Which one? Because that seems to be important so the youth can log on. Please advise. They will need Adobe Reader so that they can read the form. Oh, and Natasha is typing right now to help with that answer as well. So please, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, if you um, continue to have any questions for us, we welcome you to um, we welcome you to ask us your questions and send those to info at illinoisworknet.com. We will answer any questions we can for you. And again, if you do need to find those questions and answers, please go to the SYEP guide and check the frequently asked questions. We will answer questions here as soon as we can so that we can upload that information so it is available for everyone. All right. I do not, I see Sandra typing. I will wait for her to finish typing. And if there is anything else that any of you need to know, please type that into the chat pod so that we can uh, answer your questions for you. And if we do not have any other questions from the audience, we will be ending this session saving the recording and posting it to our archived uh, our archived webinars. Again, you can find those in the SYEP guide under uh, archived training videos. And they will also be on this section, the right-hand section of the screen. Uh, we will have those videos available as well. Yes, um, Sherry, you can print the PowerPoint for the webinar. All you have to do is download it and then print it. So in the career readiness handout box underneath the visual screen at the, the second box on the left from the top, click on that file, click download file, and it will help you save that. 
Um, Bob Bola is asking, do you know why I can log into Illinois WorkNet account? It says I have an account but doesn't let me gain access. I believe you meant cannot log into. Um, Bola, if you want to send info at IllinoisWorkNet.com, an email with your um, what you think your username is, and then what your email address is. We will check on that and send that uh, information back to you. And Natasha just put the email address in the chat pod. So if you have any questions about being able to log into your WorkNet account, uh, please send that there. You also can uh, ask it if you've forgotten your password you can just do a forgot your password and it will send you an automated email so that you can reset your password. All right, I do not see any additional questions coming up. We have a continuing conversation going with Sandra. And we will be closing down, oh, I'm sorry, where me, can I create a new WorkNet account for new staff? Let me uh, show but, them that real quick. Yeah, hold on. Also, just for Sandra, this is Natasha. And um, I just want to let you know that the, the can you show, can you make the window smaller uh, so that they can see how the website is used as responsive design? So that the website is not yeah yeah I mean not like not zoom in and out but like like instead of making it full you know oh I'm sorry okay all right yeah so they can see how the site adjusts so even with the um, employment guide that it, you can see how the design of the site changes so yes they will be able to use their cell phone to throw throughout the site it you know the website is designed to be used on the uh, different you know on phone um, but as far as the question uh, regarding Adobe I am assuming that um, you're talking about you know the youth being able to watch the violence prevention webinar using their cell phone and if that's the case then Yes, they can use the Adobe Connect just like you're using this today to view the violence prevention webinar on their phone, but they will need to have um, an Adobe. I, I believe there's some kind of download that they have to, or something that they have to install. I can't remember exactly, but they will have to do that for their phone. But for the website, you don't need to do that. I, I, my, also, my thought, Natasha, for the phone, it might grab a lot of bandwidth, so they would need to make sure that they're plugged in to something or have access to their charger. All right, so now we had a question about where can I create a new WorkNet account for new staff. You would go to the SYEP guide. You would click on the Get Started, and this is, we did demonstrate this in the first uh, webinar today on the Get Started. Um, under Setup Team, you would click on Set Up Illinois WorkNet Workforce Partner Account. It would take you to a map of the state and say, for example, that you are in Madison County. You would click on Madison County. It would give you a listing of the partners who are in Madison County. So maybe it is, let's pick uh, Illinois Department of Human Services. Then all they would have to do is pick what is it that they want to do, fill in the rest of their information, and follow through on to the next step, and that would help them set up the account. Um, again, if you have someone new, 
we do need to be notified by email so that we can add them to the summer youth ex uh, so that they can access the summer youth employment tools. All right, any other questions? Oh, good point, Chelsea. You do need to pick your organization, and if your organization is already not already there, they will need to uh, add, have the, the organization added, and that is something that uh, you, you will need to communicate with staff at uh, Illinois WorkNet. All right. Sandra's typing. Natasha, do you want to answer that? I'm going to finish the recording here. We will stay online for just a moment to, to see if you have any other questions. So thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. for work readiness. Have a great afternoon.